Hello and welcome to another edition of Inside Copy. Television's high-rated sitcom Josie is once again grabbing headlines due to the off-screen antics of its volatile star, Josie Joplin. This time, the explosive star is rumored to be divorcing her husband and co-star, Toby Joplin. Even though their popular show extols family values, their real-life marriage is Battle of the Stars. So far, Josie and Toby have refused to confirm or deny the rumors. But here at Inside Copy, we don't take no comment for an answer. We take you now to Kendall Moss Studios, where Josie Joplin is arriving now. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are here today at Kendall Moss Studios, home of the popular sitcom Josie. And I believe that's her now. Any proof of the rumor that you and your husband are breaking up? Is there trouble with your marriage? Toby! Toby! Josie Joplin down the hall. Toby Joplin, you sneaky slime ball. Hey, Josie. Hey, you can't come in here. No girlfriend, huh? You liar. What's she? Are you sleeping with my husband? Get the girl. Get the girl. No, hey, leave me alone. This is all a mistake. Toby's oh, just giving me notes for next week's script. That better be all he's giving you, honey, or you're dead. Now, what are you doing in here? You know you're not supposed to be out of here. Go on, go away. Well, it looks like Josie Joplin has won this round, but if we know her, the fight is far from over. My client's offering you half a million, Mackenzie. It's a lot of money, Miss Pullman. Well, he's in a lot of trouble. Of course, the evidence against him is all circumstantial, but you never know which way a jury's gonna go. Well, in my experience, most juries go for the truth. Sure, if it's presented properly. But you've seen the headlines. Mega-rich software tycoon indicted for murder of business rival. Mega-rich. You see the bias. Juries hate rich people. Ah, uh, you should have watched your step. Those were nice shoes. You can convince the jury he didn't do it. Make him see the man behind the money. Talk about his charity work. All he's done for the poor and the rich. Exactly. I've seen you in court, Mackenzie. Nobody works a jury like you. Mackenzie. Oh, Iris, hello. I'm afraid I can't talk now. I'll call you back in 10 minutes? Thanks. You think I manipulate juries? In the most positive way. You're the best. You know the figure I quoted? Between us, I think you'll go higher. There's only one problem with your proposition, Counselor. What's that? Your client's guilty. I don't understand. Don't expect you to. Have a safe trip back to New York, Mr. Pullman. Too bad about your shoes. Iris Bill, what about... Slow down. What about Ivy? The what? What channel? You sneaky slime ball. Hey, Joe. All of them. Hey, you can't come in no here. Your girlfriend, huh? You liar. What's she? Are you sleeping with my husband? Get the girl. No, get the girl. Of course I'm not. No, hey, leave me alone. This is all a mistake. Toby, you just Ivy. Next week's script. That better what go. in the name of blue snakes you got yourself What into? are you doing in here? You know you're not supposed to be out of here. Go on. Go away. Uh, yes, uh, Iris, I saw it. Now, darling, stop crying. I uh, Don't worry, Iris. I'll go down there and bring her home. Or something else, like the tickets. <laughs> oh, I think that's everything. Now. We're all set. Bella? Hi. Hi. Bill McKenzie. Bill, good to see you again. Hi, Harry. <laughs> Are you flying the coop again? Well, I, I'm joining Perry at The Hague in Netherlands. He's arguing a case in the world court. The world court? Boy, am I impressed. Mm -hmm. He can't do it without you, though, can he? So he says. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me, uh, yeah. Janice. This is Bill McKenzie. Janice, my assistant. You remember? Oh, yeah. We talked on the phone. Nice right. to see you. You know, uh... You don't ever leave the ranch without there being a reason. There wouldn't be a problem now, would there? Well, it's my niece, Ivy. Uh, mm. Wonderful girl. I mm. helped my sister raise her when her yeah. daddy died. Yeah. 
Well, she got herself mixed up with some woman on television, Josie yeah. Joplin. Oh, your your niece is the Ivy West, who's having the with uh, Toby Joplin. Well, we don't know that for a fact, but uh, can't raise her on the phone, so I'm going over to the studio yes. and track her down. That show tapes this afternoon. Uh, I, I have a friend who's in the production company there. I'll, I'll ring up and I'll get you a ticket. Oh, good going, Janice. That Janice. You see, she'll be there anytime you need her, Bill. And and Ken, he'll be here in the morning. Oh. I'm just sorry I can't help you, Bill. Oh, it's lovely to see you. I'm so late. I'm okay. really late. Well, let me help you. Oh, here's, here's your coat. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Bella? Mm -hmm. Next time I'm in town, will you have dinner with me? It's a date. Safe trip. Bye, Bill. Ivy? Ivy? Uncle Bill! You might have heard me talk about that on Oprah. Miss that. Oh. Well, you know, they have reruns, so maybe if you could catch that one, then you'd know what I'm about. I think um, the only person eating you alive is you. Uncle Bill McKenzie, Toby Joplin. Toby's co-star and producer of the show. He's the boss. Well, I am when Josie lets me be. <laughs> Mr. Joplin? Oh, just call me Mr. Josie, Bill. Everybody else does. My uncle's worried I might be in trouble with you. Oh, Bill, my intentions are entirely honorable. Actually, I'd marry the girl if my wife didn't take such a dim view of that whole harem thing. Women can be so jealous. Mostly when they have good reason, is my experience. 
Uh, our mistress calls. Seriously, Bill, Ivy's the best production assistant I've ever had, and that's as far as it goes. You have my word. So the stories are all lies. Never believe what you read in the tabloids. That's my motto. Toby, we got problems. Will you stop all the yapping and get your ugly butt back here? I gotta go. Excuse Enjoy the show, me. okay? Excuse me, Toby. What is this, huh? You're supposed to be making Josie happy. She's meaner than ever. Who's a man with Mr. Joplin? Ben Landry, Josie's manager. She keeps him dancing. He likes doing that? Sure. She's a star. Well, Uncle Bill, are you satisfied that I'm not in trouble? I'm satisfied you're doing what you want to. And I'm happy. Tell Mom I'm happy. That's important. Hey, would you like to watch the show from the wings? Sure. That'd be fun. taping before okay so you know the whole deal try not to nod off on me okay for the rest of you a sitcom taping is a lot like watching a tv show at home but there's a couple differences on the plus side there's no commercials Yay! and on the minus side it takes about twice as long and there's no zapping channels to catch the latest celebrity trial updates on court tv uh, uh, hey oh one more minute left to showtime. Would you like to meet the stars of our show? Yeah! 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 Ladies and gentlemen, the lovely young lady playing our teenage daughter, Regina Hooverman, Claire Howard! Yeah! And as Regina's truck driver dad, the bumbling Bert Hooverman, our co-star, co-creator, co-producer, co-spouse of the year, not to mention Davenport, Iowa's favorite son, Toby Joplin! <laughs> and finally, the lady who knew me when, the woman who put the blue back into blue collar, the one and only star of our show, because without her there would be no show, ladies and gentlemen, Josie Joplin! <laughs> We just love you so much, and I'm telling you, this show is going to be better than you even know. Lots of surprises, lots of good things. I want you to clap real loud, have a good time. Let's have a good show! Bert, tell Gina she's not going to date Ricky Denninger. You're not going to date Rick Denninger? Why isn't she going to date Rick Denninger? Because I dated his dad. And he thought no meant, come on, come on, try a little harder. <laughs> well, just because that happened to me doesn't mean it's going to happen to oh, you. Cut. You're an idiot. The line is, just because it happened to you doesn't mean it's going to happen to me. It's all that peroxide, you know, that blonde stuff that's eating up your brain. You're really obnoxious, you know that? What did you say to me? Come on, Josie, don't get upset. Huh? What do you mean, don't get upset? Wait a minute. Are you siding with her against me? Are you sleeping with her, too? Hey, bimbo, I thought I fired you. Josie, there are people watching. Hey, get Please. Out of my way. We want to talk to you. You're such a loser. Do you know that? You're sleeping with all these women and siding with them against me. Oh, Your wife. Don't you know that I know, honey? How could. Do you think that I'm stupid? I want you to know something. I am not stupid. No, oh, you're not stupid. You're just crazy. Josie. <laughs> You're just all good to hell, okay? Especially you. Yeah? Over your dead body. <laughs> Promised you some surprises. <laughs> it's gonna get even better tomorrow. Can I hear it? About what happened in there. Boy, I... That was quite a performance. How did you know? 
Well, I saw Josie Joplin give the high sign to that girl's photographer. Publicity. It was Josie's idea. What about you, Ivy? Why do you go along with this? Every time Josie does something outrageous, the ratings go up. That's good for me, too. I didn't expect her to slap me. That was just rotten. Here's a little lower than that, darling. She doesn't seem to care what folks think about you. You mean Mom? Tell her it's just showbiz. Tell her that I'm... Ivy! Oh. <sighs> I gotta go. Oh, it's so good to see you, Uncle Bill. Ah. Good afternoon, with highs in the low to the mid 70s. Excuse me, Noreen. We're going to go live now in Hollywood, where Ivy West has been arrested for the murder of Jocelyn Joplin, star of the popular situation comedy Josie. Holy mother of pearl. She was dead when I got there. I didn't kill her, Uncle Bill. I never one moment thought you did. How's Mom holding up? She's worried. Her and you. Oh, stop it, Ivy. Beating up on yourself won't help. Oh, come on. 
Tell me what happened last night. Um, I was working in the production office. Hmm. And I got a page from Josie. Calling from where? The hotel. She moved into the hotel because um, she wanted the press to think that she'd walked off the show and disappeared. You know, more publicity. Mm -hmm. So her hotel phone number was on the pager? No. It was one of those pagers where you phone into a central service and, and then they send you a typed message on the pager screen. Yeah, well, how do you know it was uh, the call was from Josie? The message said, get your butt over here. Oh. Yeah. Vintage Josie. Mm -hmm. So I got my butt over there. Did you tell anyone you were going over to Josie's hotel? No. Outside the, um, <clears throat> the cleaning crew, I was the only one in the office. Why'd you sneak into the hotel by the back stairs? Because Josie wanted... She didn't want anyone from the show seen at the hotel. Oh. I see. So you kept out of sight. See ya. The door to her room was open. It was dark inside. And somebody knocked me down. You get a look at him? Nope. It was too dark. Everything just happened so fast. <laughs> Did anything else happen last night? at the studio or, or your home? Anything unusual? No. Or the jerk in the Jeep. What Jeep? What? This guy almost ran me down in the studio parking lot. Had you seen him before? Never. And I know everyone that works at the studio. Now, this guy was in a really big hurry. Mm -hmm. I remember his, his license plate because it had odd number. It looked like it was a vanity plate, but it wasn't. You know, it was some um, 777 something. Yeah, 777. All right. Now, just one last question, and this is important. Besides you, who else knew that Josie would moved over to that hotel last night? Toby, Claire, Ben Landry, Lisa. That's all. One of them could have framed you for murder. Your client and the deceased were in a public no fight idea. just we one week before the murder. An audience of over 200 people heard your client threaten Josie Joplin. Well, that was a publicity stunt, Lieutenant. It might have started out as a publicity stunt, and then it got serious. Josie Joplin threatened to fire your client. Your client knew she was going to do it and came here planning a murder. Uh, my client came here because Josie Joplin paged her. Wrong. We checked the hotel's computerized billing systems. No calls came into this room last night. No calls went out of this room last night. Know what I think, Counselor? What do you think, Lieutenant? I think your client called that paging service herself, and that obviously would give her an alibi. Well, you're entitled to your opinion, but I I'm partial to the facts myself. Well, all right. Let's check the facts. Fact. The desk clerk phoned 911 to report hearing a violent struggle in Josie Joplin's hotel suite. Fact. That call was clocked in at 11.40 p.m., Fact. A patrol car arrived on the scene at 11.51. Fact. They entered the room at 11.54. Fact. Know what they found, Counselor? Not till you tell me. The deceased. Your client crouched over the deceased with the murder weapon in her hand. Fact. What about the 14 minutes between the time the desk clerk called 911 and the police arrived? What do you think my client was doing all that time? Waiting around to be caught or catching butterflies? Ask her. Doesn't it strike you maybe my client was set up? That's an interesting theory, Counselor, but personally I prefer the facts. And the facts tell me we have this one nailed. Murder one, open and shut. Mm -hmm. The partial license plate Ivy gave you? DMV lists over 200 plates starting with the number 777, but only one is a Jeep in the Los Angeles area. Did you get a name and address? Yeah, Martin Kester, DMV, has him in an apartment out on Morrison Avenue in the Valley. Thought I'd drive out and meet him. Watch yourself. You might ask him what he was doing at the studio that night and why he was in such a hurry he darn near ran over Ivy. Uh, well, let's uh, see where we stand. Ken? Okay, according to Ivy, only four other people knew where Josie was that night. 
That would be Toby Joplin, Ben Landry, Claire Howard, and Lisa Kay. That's all. Her husband, her business manager, her co-star, and her best friend. They all knew where she was. Which means that any one of them had the means and the opportunity to plan and execute her murder. But did any of them have a motive? We need to know more about these folks, Janice. That isn't going to be hard, Mr. McKenzie. The people around Josie had their lives all over the tabloids. I know more about them than I do my own family. You read the tabloids? Ah, uh, no. No, I don't read them. I, they, they're there at the checkout counter. No, you can't help but glance at the headlines. How else would we know where Elvis is appearing? With my Jeep. Relax. Relax? Are you Martin Kester? Who's asking? My name's Ken Milansky. I was wondering what you were doing outside the Candlemoss Studios the other night. Oh. Sure, I... We'll change the name. Call it Josie's Family. Introduce a new character, Josie's mean old Aunt Maggie. This must be a very difficult time for you. Oh, huh? it's been brutal. Hey, Sally, looking good. I understand you and your wife had a colorful relationship. 
Well, I had the bruises to prove it. Yeah, she claimed you came after her with a baseball bat. Now, is that really true? That's a lie. It was a tire iron, and she hit me. The woman had a temper like a volcano. Why'd you stay with her? Josie almost killed me, but she never bored me. I loved her. Is it true that she made you sign a prenuptial agreement? So if you divorced her, you'd uh, be left without a cent? Now, who told you that? Who sold me out? Well, you talked about it on uh, Oprah. Who knew anyone was listening? <laughs> Luckily for me, Josie and I were happily married. According to an interview in the National Informer the day she died, said she was uh, divorcing you. Oh, that's a lie. They made it up. Josie were here, she'd tell them. Just what is the truth here, Mr. Joplin? Uh, just one more uh, question, Mr. Joplin. Where were you when your wife was being murdered, sir? I was right here in my office. Anybody see you? No. But what about Ivy? I mean, she and Josie hated each other. Huh. Story's right here. Read it. All right, you read this. Oh, what's this, another interview? I'm gonna have to see you in court. Hi, Patricia McDonald. Ken Malansky. Mind if I come on in? Excuse me, am I supposed to know you? You ought to. You took my picture outside Martin Kester's apartment building just before you almost ran me down. You're a photographer. How did you find me? Well, I got your license plate number as you drove away. You're good. The DMV says your name's Patricia McDonald. You work for the National Informer. Are you checking me out because you like me? Or is snooping your hobby? You tell me. You're the reporter. What were you doing outside Martin Kester's apartment building? I don't have to tell you anything. <laughs> you know, cameras have always fascinated me. Now, let's see. Where do we put the film in? Oh. Here, I see. Let's look at it this way. You owe me what's on this film. Okay, look. I'm covering the Josie Joplin case. I followed you from Perry Mason's office. You're working for Bill McKenzie. You were my best lead. What can you tell me about Kester? You mean the guy in the Jeep? Nothing. What's his story anyway? How's he connected to the case? Who says he's connected? Right. Like you'd be doing all this if he wasn't. And what am I doing? Tracking me down, asking me if I know the guy. You don't know where he is, and you need to find him, right? <laughs> right. Maybe I can help. How? Do I get an inside crack at the story from you? You tell me where to find Kester, and we'll talk about it. Give me my film. Why? Well, that's how we find Kester. After you. <clears throat> Hollywood agents, don't get me started. You know why a lot of medical labs across the country are using agents instead of rats in their experiments? They found the students don't get as attached to agents. Who's there? Bill McKenzie, go ahead. I'm enjoying your monologue. <sighs> Speaking of animals, I just found out what you get when you cross a lawyer and a snake. You get an agent who can shed his skin. <laughs> 
I hear you chuckling. Are you sure you're an attorney? Oh, yeah. 40 years now. Just getting the hang of it. Where'd you learn about lighting? Well, I used to work backstage when my wife was an amateur actress. She was good, too. A lot of folks said she ought to make a career of it. But she, uh, said she didn't want to leave the ranch. Didn't want to leave me. <laughs> said she was content. I hope so. God knows I was contented with her. You enjoy working on your material. The truth, doing stand-up terrifies me. Is that why you haven't played clubs since you and Josie Joplin split up? Josie and I were a team. When she went off to do her sitcom, I couldn't get any solo bookings. Oh, gosh, I find that hard to believe. I read a lot of reviews of your act together. A lot of critics thought you were funnier than she was. <clears throat> Am I supposed to be flattered? So, instead of striking off on your own, you uh, took a job warming up Josie's audience. Why would you do that? Well, maybe I was afraid of performing without Josie. Maybe she was afraid of you. The competition wanted you in her shadow. No, she couldn't force me to do that. A couple of years ago, you two had a real knockdown fight. Josie withdrew uh, felony assault charges, but only after you signed a long-term contract with her production company, right? So you're saying she blackmailed me? I'm saying she cut you a deal. No, you're wrong. Josie dropped the charges because we're old friends. Well, your old friend wouldn't release you from your contract a couple of weeks ago when you were offered a Showtime comedy special. Or six months ago when uh, another network wanted you for your own sitcom or a year ago when you were offered a job in a movie. She had you boxed in, Miss Kay, didn't she? <laughs> Josie and I would have worked it out. <laughs> Not according to your agent. He said she was killing off your career. Now I know I hate agents. Can you tell me where you were the night Josie died? Yeah, I was in the production office working on material for my warm-up routine. Did anyone see you? No, but I've got it on tape.
Yeah. I was in my car when I noticed Kester go into the building. And by the time I got here, he'd already started the fire. Oh, yeah. I know, partner. <clears throat> oh, we're talking total multimedia, gentlemen. You get the entertainment software you need for your electronics hardware. We get a new outlet for our product. Everybody's happy. We must be clear. You personally control all rights to this material. 16 hours, gentlemen. 16 hours of Josie Joplin concert tapes previously unseen and unedited. Perfect for video and CD and yours for a seven-figure song. What do you think? Gentlemen, um, would you excuse me for just a minute? Uh, Irene, get the boys whatever they want. Well... Mr. McKenzie, this is a surprise. Well, I see you're busy. Uh, I just yes. need a few moments of your oh. time. I could wait. Uh, well, yes, I am in a meeting. Could you make it fast? Oh, I'll make it uh, yes. right to it. Uh, now, you were Josie Joplin's business manager. Yes, I was. Yes, poor Josie. Well, she was my favorite client. Oh, she was your only client. Uh, well, she... <laughs> when you're handling as someone as big as Josie Joplin who needs other clients, right? No, I mean, uh, once she became a star, she made you drop all your other clients. No, that's, no, that, no, that's just wrong. Now, you're making things up here, Mr. Oh, no. McKenzie. No, I don't make things up, Mr. Landry. Sure. Josie needed full-time handling, yes. But you see, she made so much money for the company, I was happy to do it. We owned her production company together. Did you know that? No. Get out of here. Josie Joplin was ending your partnership. You're lying, Mr. Landry. No, sh I, uh, Two days before her murder, she filed papers cutting you out of her production company. She was firing you. Ah, uh, gentlemen, gentlemen, I'll be right with you. Irene, get them whatever they want. What does that lawsuit have to do with anything? Well, if Josie's dead, then so is her lawsuit, huh? I mean, that leaves you in control of her company. Now, that is a, that's a pretty good reason for wanting your client dead. Obviously, you don't understand the business, Mr. McKenzie. Could be. Enlighten me. To put it in terms that you would understand, Josie was the cow. And without the cow, there's no milk, now is there? So even if I keep my share of the company, how do I profit now that she's dead? Well, counting domestic syndication and cable rights to her show, uh, foreign sales to multiple markets, not to mention exploitation of ancillary rights in interactive and multimedia, I'd say that you're looking at a potential annual revenue stream in the $100 million range for the rest of this decade. Your cow is going to be given milk for some time, Mr. Landry, dead or not. I didn't kill her. Oh. And you won't mind telling me where you were while Josie was being murdered. I was at the studio. I was in her office on a conference call with investors. I was on from uh, 11.30 to almost 11.45. You can check with my people back there, and they will tell you. I'll do that. Have a nice day, gentlemen. I'll see you in court. Mm -hmm. There he is. That is Kessler.
is that supposed to mean? Well, forgive me, Miss Howard, but uh, your publicity says you're 22. That's about 10 years off the truth, isn't it? Tabloid gossip, Mr. McKenzie. Not if Josie told him you were born 32 years ago in Wahoo, Nebraska. We've located your birth certificate, Miss Howard, the real one. You 32? For God's sake, Steve, shut up. So I play younger than my age, so what? But how long could you go on doing that? She was robbing you of a movie career, wasn't she? What does she have against you? Not a thing. Josie didn't need a reason to be mean. Boy, how you must have hated her for that and wanted her out of the way. Right. Look at me. I couldn't beat Josie in a cat fight. Never mind, kill her. I'm not strong enough. Oh, maybe not, but he is. Hey, a couple of minutes ago, you were mighty eager to defend your lady. Back off! A man who's quick to anger usually feels he's got something to prove. Get out of my way. way. Steve! Uh, what do you got to prove, huh? You don't have a name, do you? I'm warning you. Steve. Maybe you don't need a name. Maybe it's enough to be Claire Howard's boyfriend. Steve! Boy, he's got a temper. A smart girl like you might find that temper useful. Where were you when Josie was being killed, Mr. Boyfriend? He was with me in my dressing room at the studio. The guard saw us. Ask him. I'll do that. And I'll see you both in court early tomorrow morning. As night clerk at the Belmont Hotel on the evening of Josie Joplin's death, did something unusual occur which caused you to summon police to the hotel? Yes, sir. Please tell the court what happened the night of the murder at approximately 11.40 p.m. Well, I heard sounds of a struggle, a violent struggle in Miss Joplin's room. I immediately called 911. The police arrived 10, yeah, about 10 minutes later. We all went upstairs. We knocked on Miss Joplin's door, but there was no answer. Did you enter Miss Joplin's room with the police at that time? Yes, sir, I did. And what did you see? I saw her. Indicating the defendant, Ivy West, Your Honor. Her clothes were all messed up. Her sleeves were torn. She was bending over Miss Joplin's body. Thank you, Miss Michener. Your witness, Counselor. Ms. Michener, um... Now, you call the police at 11.40, and uh, you entered the uh, Mrs. Joplin's hotel suite at 11.54, is that correct? Yes, sir, that's correct. Now, during those 14 minutes, did you see anyone enter or leave Miss Joplin's hotel suite? Oh, no. There was no one. Where were you? Me? Yeah. I was outside, waiting for the police. So... Anyone could have entered or left the hotel suite during those 14 minutes. You were outside waiting for the police, and uh, you wouldn't have seen them, would you? No, sir. <laughs> That's what I thought. Uh, I have no further questions. The people call Lieutenant Ed Brock. I am showing you People's Exhibit 7, which has already been identified as the murder weapon. Can you tell us if any fingerprints were discovered on this lamp by the forensic team? We found several prints on the lamp, all belonging to the defendant, Ivy West. Were any other fingerprints found on the murder weapon, Lieutenant? Only Miss West. The people have no further questions, Your Honor. Uh, uh Lieutenant, oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Um, now, you say the only fingerprints found on this lamp were those belonging to my client? That's what I just testified. Now, how, how do you explain that? I'm not sure what you're asking. Well, uh, in a busy hotel room, people are coming and going all the time, turning the lamps off, feeling them and all. How, how, do you, how do you explain the fact there's only one set of fingerprints on this particular lamp? Well, maybe the hotel maid wiped the lamp when she came in to clean the room. Did you ask her if she No, counselor, I didn't ask her yeah, if she But didn't. now, what, what if I tell you that the hotel maid did not clean the room that day because Mrs. Joplin wouldn't let her in. Then that means someone else must have wiped this lamp clean. Uh, probably the real murderer. Objection, Your Honor. Argumentative. Assumes facts not in evidence. Calls for speculation. Withdraw the question and thank this officer for testifying here today. Nothing further. Uh, you, may, uh, you may step down, Lieutenant. Thank you. We're doing fine. Where's Ken? I called in earlier. He's tracking down a lead. I hope he got a good one. Can we call its next witness? 
Will you please tell me what we're doing here? Listen, Milansky, if you want to find Kester, just do as I say. Now, I snatched the appointment sheet off the receptionist's desk. The woman's name is Rosa Westlake. Like I thought, she comes in every day. My source tells me she has a jealous husband. She's in there. She's waiting. Waiting for who? You. Well, this is as far as I go. Good luck. Make it real deep. I'm very tense. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, excuse me. Mrs. Westlake requested another masseur today. Take over an 18. Oh, yeah. You must be new here. You have marvelous hands. We're an attorney. Oh. You're an attorney? What, is business that bad? Oh, actually, business is booming. Uh. We have to work on this muscle. You're holding a lot of tension oh. here. Oh. oh, yeah. Your life in the big city. Uh. Oh. Actually, I, I'm working on the Josie Joplin murder case. And I think that you could be a very important witness. We're looking into a Martin Kester. I believe you know him. I don't remember a Martin Kester. Well, let me give you a hint. He gave you a gold necklace. Oh, God. Just don't tell Sydney. It's your choice. Tell me about it here, where I can hear your side of the story. Or if you'd rather, Bill McKenzie can take your part in court. In court? Or here. Request permission to examine Mr. Joplin as an adverse witness, Your Honor. Uh, within reason, Mr. Wells. Mr. Joplin, on more than one occasion, your wife accused you and the defendant of having a love affair, didn't she? <laughs> Actually, uh, yeah, yeah.
Lawrence Hotel suite. Now, I believe the real murderer used those 14 minutes to frame my client, and I want to establish that there were several other people who had both the motive and the opportunity to do so. I'll, uh, I'll permit this line of testimony within reason. Now, you can go ahead, Mr. Well, Lawrence. thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, uh, Mr. Ryan of the studio cleanup crew is in this court. Mr. Ryan is prepared to testify that on the night of the murder, his cleanup crew waxed the hallway outside the production office door from 11 p.m. until just past midnight with an industrial waxing machine. They make an awful racket. You could never have recorded anything on this tape without picking up that sound. So, if you weren't at the studio making this recording while Josie Joplin was being killed, what were you doing, Miss Kay? Now, we've established that Josie Joplin's lawsuit would have cost you everything you had, Mr. Landry, and yet you say that while she was being murdered, you were on a conference call to investors? From 11.30 to 11.45 p.m., that's right. Now, you made that call from Josie's office at the studio. Yes, I did. From a studio phone. N no, n not exactly. Oh, you made that call from a cellular phone, didn't you? And uh, the call lasted from 11.25 to 11.31, not 11.45. So you could have made that call from anywhere, even from your car on the way to Ms. Joplin's hotel, so you don't really have an alibi for the time of the murder, do you, Mr. Landry? Steve and I were in my dressing room. A studio guard saw us. Yes, that studio guard is right here in the courtroom, Mr. Serbic. Yes, Mr. Serbic uh, will indeed testify he saw you in a passionate embrace. I told you. But not with your boyfriend, Mr. Gelson. You may sit down, Mr. Serbic. How is that possible? Well, because he saw your boyfriend driving away from the studio a half hour earlier. Now, you may have an alibi for the time of the murder, but Steve Gelson doesn't, which makes me wonder. Why would you perjure yourself for no reason? Do you have a reason? What are you trying to hide? Or whom are you trying to hide? I got people coming after me. I do not like that. What? No, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. You're already in this too deep, pal. And you listen to me. Unless you want to see your name in the paper, you better get over here with some cash and you better do it right now. You got that? You know, Marty, can I call you Marty? The informer has a very generous tips to reimbursement policy. She's going to say anything to get a story. Her paper's never going to pay. Shut up. Why did you say that? He's because, an exclusive. Because if you pay him, it ruins his credibility as a possible defense witness. Oh, right. You think you're going to see him in court? He's holding us prisoner. Think positively, Patricia. Besides, I said potential witness. Now, why don't you help me with these ropes? Uh, how do I do that? Let's see if I can work this rope through that Indian bracelet of yours. See if I can sneak up on him. You stay here. Oh, and lose my story? You're nuts. Pardon me, son. I'm a little lost. How far to Malibu Canyon? Bill, that's Kester. He's got a gun. That's all right. So do I. Drop it. All right. What are you doing outside the studio the night Josie Jotham was killed? Did someone hire you to kill her? Hey, look, I didn't kill anybody. All right? All you got to do is ask him. He'll tell you. Who? Ask who? Ask who? Oh. I like your timing, Mackenzie. The girl with the camera still following this story. Yeah, it just keeps getting bigger and better. 
That's one way to look at it. He might have proved I'd be innocent. Killed Martin Kester, could have killed Josie Joplin. Boy, oh boy. I give my prize half a looser for a new lead. Well, I've always wanted a horse. Try that. You keep it storage. Storage locker key. Where'd you get this? From Martin Kester's gym bag. He left it in his car. You took evidence from the crime scene? Well, no. The car was on the street. It was unlocked. Perfectly legal. Pretty clever, huh? It should have been turned over to the police. I thought you'd be pleased. I'll be pleased when Lieutenant Brock gets this key. Then we'll ask him to find out what's in the storage locker. Well, you do it any way you like. But I am not losing the story. You never quit. Neither do you. Oh, they just made for each other. So were Bonnie and Clyde. Think so? The girl cuts too many corners. Going to get her into trouble someday. Just hope Ken's not there when it happens. Get you. Lieutenant, in your investigation into the homicide of Martin Kester, have you been able to find anything out about his lifestyle? Well, we learned that Martin Kester lived way beyond his means. He had an apartment filled with expensive clothes. He also had a vacation house under a false name. And yet his only apparent source of income was his job as a masseur at the Beverly Hills Health Spa. As far as we've been able to determine, counsel, that is correct. Our Lieutenant, I'm opening People's Exhibit D, a shoebox, which the police removed this morning from Martin Kester's storage locker. Has your lab been able to identify the white powdery substance... The lab identified that as cocaine, Counselor. Thank you, Lieutenant. No further questions from this witness? Your Honor. This witness uh, may be excused. Your Honor, the people fail to see the relevance of this line of testimony. I mean, storage lockers and shoe boxes. Where's this all going? Yeah, the court is equally as curious. Uh, Mr. McKenzie, uh, where are you taking us? I need to ask the court's indulgence, Your Honor. Uh, you have my word. This is all going somewhere. Well, then I suggest you get us to there, and quickly. Defense calls Mrs. Rosa Westlake to the stand. Now, Mrs. Westlake, you understand that you are in a court of law and under oath. Yes. Now, will you tell us, please, what is Martin Kester to you? My monsieur. And what else? My lover. Who gave you the gold necklace you're now wearing? Yes. He stole it, didn't he? No. But someone else did. Thank you. No more questions, Your Honor. Mr. Joplin, you said you hadn't.
producer. Kester could have taken all that away from you, and he threatened to do just that, didn't he? Come on, Mr. Joplin. Your tire tracks are up there at Kester's house. It's time to fish or cut bait. All right. Kester would have ruined me. But I didn't kill Josie. The truth just doesn't want to come out of your mouth, does it? Why don't The night you... Josie was murdered, I was with Claire. Claire and I were having an affair. More like a fling. A small fling. But I love Josie. I never would have hurt her. Your Honor. I'm nothing further. I suggest under the circumstances that the people hold off the cross-examination allow Mr. Joplin to confer with his attorney. This uh, court is recessed until tomorrow. Sorry, Mr. McKenzie. So am I. Toby didn't kill Josie, and Claire didn't. That leaves Ben Landry and Lisa Kay. One of them must be the murderer. Yeah, but which one? And how we prove it? That's the hound we're after. I had Chinese food for breakfast. Cold pizza, though. Now that is different. How about popcorn and a side of cold beans? Oh, God, no. So you got the photos. Great. I'll have the story ready for you by deadline. Thanks, Jack. I've got the front page locked for tomorrow's edition. Well, if you worked for a real paper, you'd have a Pulitzer. You don't get it, do you, Malansky? The National Informer is just my first step. On to bigger and better things, huh? You bet. And you will have to stop by sometime. Help me polish my Pulitzer. Thanks. To the both of you. Oh. See you in court. Uh, uh, Sorry. You like Patricia McDonald, don't you, Kenneth? Well, uh, she's smart and she's tough. She gets what she wants. She goes after someone and she gets them, whatever it takes. <laughs> Who does that? Boy, I can't get it. I just can't take it in. Why would Josie Joplin give Patricia McDonald a story that was untrue and would make her look foolish? You know, for publicity. Say whatever you want about me. Just spell my name right. No, but some stars do resent those kinds of stories. Josie Joplin was threatening a lawsuit. Yeah. Toby said the divorce story was a lie. There's something wrong here. Bucket of snakes. What? Ken? Ken, you got some calls to make. Uh, Miss Kay, uh, you told this court that while Josie Joplin was being murdered, you were taping your comedy act. You lied about that, didn't you? Yes, I lied. Will you tell us what you were really doing that night? I was making a telephone call. To Jack at 315-555-7232, am I correct? How did you know that? We subpoenaed your phone log. You made a lot of calls to Jack, didn't you? Jack's an old friend. 315-555-7232. Is the phone number of the National Informer. Jack Handley is the editor. You were his source for the stories about Josie Joplin, weren't you? Yes, most of them. Exclusive interview Josie confirms divorce, blames girl Friday. Did you give Jack the tip for this story? No. That story was a stunt. And when I read it, I called Jack and I warned him that he'd been ripped off. This story in the National Informer was a fraud? Yes. See, Josie was a shark. And once she sunk her teeth into you, she'd never let go. 
she'd been trying for years to catch the informer. And that story was a lie, and the writer didn't cross-check it. And Josie was going to nail him. You hated her, didn't you? Yes. And I still hate her, but I didn't kill her. Thank you, Miss Kay. I have no further questions. Your Honor, the people reserve their right to cross-examine this witness later. You may step down. Mr. McKenzie? Defense calls Patricia McDonald to the stand. Miss McDonald, how long have you worked for the National Informer? Uh, six years. You're well paid? Very well paid. So you like working for the National Informer? Big bucks and front page bylines. What's not to like? Then why have you applied for a job at almost every major news organization in the country over the last six years? The Denver Post, Cleveland Plain Dealer, San Francisco Chronicle, Washington Post, New York Times, L.A. Times, on and on. These are copies of your job applications, aren't they? Something wrong with that? Well, they turned you down, all of them. Working for the informer has wrecked your credibility as a legitimate journalist, hasn't it? It's difficult for any reporter to get on those papers. Miss McDonald, what would happen to a writer who caused the national informer to lose a libel suit costing millions of dollars? The um, writer would be fired. Your byline is on this story. Josie Joplin gave you an exclusive interview in which she told you that she planned to divorce her husband. Am I right? Yes, that's correct. Did you cross-check this story? Oh, well, I got it straight from Josie, in her own words. In her own words? Isn't it true that so long as the tabloids don't use direct quotes, they can print all kinds of lies, filth, and trash, and say it comes from, quote, reliable sources, unquote? Well, some tabloids may do that. But a direct quote in her own words. That opens the door to a libel suit, doesn't it? It can. Knowing that, and knowing Josie Joplin's reputation for having a mean streak, why would you trust her own words? Well, I had no reason not to. Because this wasn't the first story she'd given you, was it? No, it wasn't. She slipped you other stories from time to time. Nothing as spectacular as this. And you printed them, didn't you? Yes, I did. And they were all accurate? Yes. She fed you accurate stories so you wouldn't be suspicious when she fed you a lie. She set you up, Miss McDonald. She put your paper on the spot for a 20 or $30 million libel suit for a story she would deny ever giving to you. And that would have meant the end of your high-priced job in your career as even a tabloid reporter. And if you couldn't get a job on the informer at the bottom of the barrel, you'd be finished. You had a motive for murder, didn't you? I was halfway across town when Josie was killed. I was taking pictures at the Roxy. This picture? Yeah, th see that clock? It says 11.40, and Josie was killed at 11.40. Now, how could I be at two different places at the same time? Maybe you can explain something to me. Oh, what's that? The woman in this picture is a movie star, very famous, very married. Well, that's the point, Mr. McKenzie. She's married, and she's dancing with some guy that isn't her husband. That's what makes it a story. I understand that. But why is this married woman wearing her wedding band on her right hand? Now, let me show you the negative. We call this defense exhibit G for identification. Uh, we acquired this negative under subpoena from the National Informers Archives. Now, while you're trying to...